One, two, one, two. Can you hear me, Houston? Yeah. Uh, Miami, I mean. <laughs> okay, Chodesh Tov, everybody. Anybody here for the first time for the new moon? Okay, give a big round of applause. First of all, let's welcome all the Scorpios. We love you, Scorpios. And we also love the ones that are not here, which are Scorpios. And all of us are going to be affected by, you know, the Kabbalists explain that every, every month there is a cosmic opening. It's called the new moon. It's a 24 hours, 25 hours, by which a new energy comes to this world. You know, the word month. Month is Chodesh. Chodesh comes from the word Chadash, new. Every, mo every month there is something new. We can open a new page, a new chapter, a new opening in our life. That's why every month in the Kabbalah Center all around the world, we come together to plant positive seeds in our life and in the world. Because now more than any other time in history, we need to plant positive seeds, don't we? And this window of time, whatever we're going to think, whatever we're going to act, whatever we're going to learn, whatever consciousness we're going to get, it's going to affect not only all the month, but it's going to affect the whole year. And the reason for that is because in the previous month, the month of Libra, we know it was the high holidays. We had Rosh Hashanah, we had Yom Kippur, we had Sukkot, Simchat Torah. It was a, a very powerful month with high elevated energy. But that was in potential. Now, this is the first month that we actually take in all this energy that we got in potential, and now we begin to manifest. That's why the first day of the month of Scorpio, of the new moon, it's considered to be the new year, because now we are actually manifesting all the energy that we got in the previous month, and we take it to the year. The question is what we're going to do with that. So if we look at the month of Scorpio, the month of Scorpio has no holidays, right? The month of Libra had so many holidays, the month of Scorpio has no holidays. And Scorpio is a water sign. Water sign. Water means what? Mercy, but also means a lot of what? Emotions, right? Those of us which are Scorpio, or if you have Scorpio in your chart, whatever there is, there's a lot of emotions. Very emotional, right? If you hurt the Scorpio, they will never forget, right? They say, Kellenberg used to say that, by the way, tonight is also the birthday of our teacher. Karen Berg, she's not in this physical domain, but it's her birthday. She's the one that opened the Kabbalah Center, you know, to open this wisdom to the world. So her birthday is tonight, and, you know, would like also to get her support. And she always said, you know, Scorpio never get angry. They get even. <laughs> right? And the reason for that is because the internal energy of the Scorpio is fire. Fire is very strong. Think about the fire signs like Leo, like Aries. It's very strong. Now, fire within the water, and water is emotion, it's tremendous amount of energy, isn't it? That's why the Scorpions are very driven. When they want to achieve something, they will achieve. They are very intuitive, again, with the water and the intuition. They are very ambition. They are very deep. They are seeking to do things. And again, fire is a motivating energy. So they, are, they also can manifest things with their intuition, with their sharpness. And, you know, they are very intuitive and 
and, and you know, very strong, very, very powerful, right? We all know the Scorpio, very strong. Now, the month of Scorpio, as we said, is empty of holidays, right? There's actually no holidays in this month. And the Kabbalists call this month not only the month of Scorpio, but they call it Mar Cheshvan, bitter Scorpio. You know, why, why to call it bitter? So some say because there's no holidays. It's kind of empty of holidays. And again, it's a water sign. And we know during this month, during this month, on the 17th day of the month of Scorpio, it was the time by which flood took place, the flood of Noah, which brought about destruction in the world, right? So when the water are not balanced, when the emotions are not balanced, it can bring destruction. So at the same time, again, why it's called bitter? Why to call a month a bitter? Why don't you call it something positive? So the answer that Kahnberg once explained, yes, on the physical level, we understand there's no holidays, it's empty. But on the internal level is that the energy that we got in the month of Libra, the question is what we're going to do with that energy in this month? How are we going to manifest? Because the letter of this month, and you can see the letters of the month on the screen, we know the Kabbalist explains that the letters are like kind of a, the seed or the vibration that rule the energy of the month. Every month has its own energy. So the letters, it's like a DNA vibration, frequency. It has a shape. It has a sound. Just by looking at it, it we awake certain energy. And, you know, just like you take the egg and the sperm and you put them together, which are, you don't see them, but from that life comes, right? It's like a magical thing that happened. The same thing, the letters are very, very vibrational energies that we don't even see, but they have the power to bring the energy of the month into our life. So the letters of the month has to do with the influences of this month, which are the planet and the constellation. So the planet of this month is the planet of Mars, okay, which is governed by the frequency of the letter Dalet. Can you say Dalet? Dalet. Dalet. And the frequency of the month of the Scorpio, which is unique, is the letter Nun. Can you say Nun? Nun. nun. Okay. Now, the letter Nun, it's a paradoxical letter. On one hand, the letter Nun is the beginning of the word Nefila, which, come, which means falling. Right? Now, is that a good reputation for the Scorpio? <laughs> to have such a letter of falling? At the same time, the letter Nun is the beginning of the word Neshama, which means soul, our soul. Our soul is the most elevated thing that there is, there is in this world. Of who we are, it's the part of the creator within us. So you have falling and you have a soul. Do you see the contradiction? So those of you that know Scorpio, how many of us know how contradicting they are? Right? One day they wake up on the right side of the bed. The next day they might wake up on the left side of the bed. One day they go and love you, they have affection. The next day they don't want to talk with you. One day they are like cold and like there's no way to get close to them. The next day they are so much loving. Do, are we familiar with that extreme energy? Absolutely. So, but why they are in that way? Because the energy of this month is energy of paradox, of extreme, but which it's up to us what we will choose. Remember, one of the things that we learned that we came into this world we wanted to access the free will. We can be either reactive or proactive. We can fall into victimhood or into taking responsibility. We can believe that darkness is real or we can do something to bring more light. 
That's our own free will. That is our perception. Because life is not about what is happening to us. It's about what we believe or see that things are happening. It's what comes from within. It's not what comes from the outside. But that's our choice. How I will experience my life, it's based on how I choose to look at my life. That's why the Creator gave us all the energy in the month of Libra, and now in the month of Scopo, He's telling us, okay, so what are you going to do with this energy? Are you going to use that energy in a way that you're going to see your life in an amazing way as your soul? Or are you going to look at your life as everything falls apart and I don't know where to find myself? But it's our choice. Is that clear? For all of us. And that's the choice. And the beauty is, the, the name of this month is called Bitter Scorpio, Mar in Hebrew. Can you say Mar? Mar means bitter. But if you rearrange the letters of Mar, you, can, you get the word Ram, which means elevated. It's just to show us the duality that we all live. Because we have within ourselves the soul, or let's say we have within ourselves the body, which is totally disconnected from the Creator, totally disconnected from life, totally about just myself, me, and I, doesn't care about spirituality, doesn't care about nothing else but myself, food, sex, rock and roll, all those things, not connected to other people, disconnect, coldness, being cold with others, separation. That's the body. The body is totally opposite to the nature of the Creator, but there is Another part within it, within us, which is called our soul, which our soul is the creator within us, which is love, which is affection, which is caring, which is understanding that we are part of something big, which is understanding that we are all connected, which is knowing that everything that happens in our lives has a purpose and serves a purpose. And nothing in this world happens randomly. It's all part of an amazing journey called life. And the fact that now things happen in a way that maybe I don't like it, it doesn't mean that's it. It's not the end. It's part of a journey that the more I connect to my soul, the more I connect to that big picture. And that's why the Scorpio deep, deep inside knows that life is amazing. And actually... The one thing the Scorpio knows more than any, anyone else is what? You'll be surprised. Death, exactly. Now, we are all afraid from death. We are all afraid from end. But the Scorpio knows that behind death, there is what? Life. Life doesn't end. Life continues no matter what. But the idea of the falling is to, to realize that part of a healthy spiritual growth is to understand that in order for me to grow, I have to fall. Because if you think about it, where do we bring the best of ourselves? Only after we fall. So how it goes? Something happens. Let's say you had a major breakdown and separation in a relationship. At the beginning, you are in shock. In the beginning, you are, don't know what to do with yourself. At the beginning, you are like, think it's the end. It almost feels like death, isn't it? I'm not talking about relationship that you are apart for many years, and now it's not there, or, or anything else that now suddenly is broken. So in the beginning, we are in shock, aren't we? Shock, devastated, don't know what to do. But if you think about all those times that you fell down and you thought it's the end and you went through a process, what happened at some point within the depth of the down, within the depth of maybe depression, within the depth of getting lost and hopeless, you found a certain strength in you that you never knew that you had. That at some point you said, wow, either you took yourself in your hands or you realize, okay, if there's no one for me, 
I will be for myself. And then from nowhere, from a place of hopelessness, you are able to get the strength and ability to suddenly rise, suddenly move, suddenly build yourself, build certain strength. You realize that actually you are more powerful than what you thought you are. You realize that actually there's a soul within you which is so powerful, so unique, so special to yourself that you don't need to compare yourself to other people because you are unique in the way that you are. And actually you started to shine of your own uniqueness out there. And suddenly people looked at you and said, wow, you are not the same as you were before. And you started to go to this kind of a transformation. And then you realize that fear is not fear and actually you have more power and strength. And then you started to rise up. Can you remember those moments? From the ashes to the top of the mountain. But it was not because somebody gave you something, but because you found amazing resources, energy and strength deep, deep, deep within you that you never knew that you had. But that happened only because you had to fall and through the falling in the darkness, you realize this tremendous power, strength, ability, and realize lessons about yourself that suddenly you're not insecure anymore, that actually you're more powerful than you thought, that actually, you know, you're not alone, that actually the creator loves you that you are not alone. And it's not because you are in relationship or not. You feel you are part of something, but it's all came from within. That's the soul within us. So that's the power of this month to create that transformation, like the phoenix from the ashes to rise up. Because only through the place, and you know, something beautiful that Kahnberg said, when you, become, when you become successful, many times, you know, if you go on the spiritual work, you understand that that success is not because of what you did, because many times we do so many things and we don't understand why we don't succeed. And then suddenly you succeed. So we understand that our successes is not because of us, it's because somehow the creator was involved in our success. Do we agree with that? The same way with our falling. Do you think you are smart enough that you designed your falling? <laughs> we didn't think about it, right? But when we fall, did you plan to fall? No, it was beyond you. Which means it has nothing to do with you. It was because the Creator was with you in the falling to give you the place or the environment by which you realize your strength and your power as you rise up. And actually it says, the creator is with you more in the falling than in the rising. Why? Because the creator, it's an energy of love. The creator, it's an energy of compassion. When you love somebody, when do you love them more? When everything is okay with them? Or when they go through pain. pain. When they go through pain, you love them actually more. Why? Because you feel what they go through and you want to get close to them and support them. Same way the Creator is with us more at the time of darkness, at the time of falling, because He feels what we go through. He realizes what, where I'm at and I'm not alone. And when I realize that, then I'm getting these tremendous supports from beyond me, and then suddenly I'm getting the strength to rise up and realize abilities, gifts, talents, unique things that I never thought that I had that now come out to fruition. You know, if you remember the time of the pandemic, many people were laid off. They didn't know what's going to happen. And, many, and some of them discovered themselves and were able to discover talents and abilities in themselves that maybe for years they knew it's there, but it was never revealed. And then they came out and wow, they were able to do something completely different than they were before. So there is a design in the falling in order to rise. 
And it's, you know, it's the mantra that Kellenberg used like again and again and again. The darkest moment of the night is just before dawn. Always. And that's why in these times, especially where we go through in the world, we need to realize that there are three kinds of negativities. How many kinds of negativities? Three. The first one is our evil inclination, our reactive system. Every time we get upset, every time we get angry, every time we get jealous, every time we want to like be like the opposite of the positive part of the Scorpio, right? Because Scorpio is very powerful, right? So when the emotions get in the wrong way, then suddenly there's revenge. There's, I want to show back. Then I want to be angry. I want to be upset. I want to destroy, right? Whatever you've built, suddenly let's destroy everything. It's a very reactive energy. That's our first kind of negativity that there is. The second one is what we call the collective negative energy, which is if we take all our individual reactiveness, negativity, energy never goes away. It goes up and creates what? A cloud, metaphysical cloud of negativity, just like the rain. You know, the water, drops of water evaporate and creates what in the sky? A cloud. And that's what we call the collective negative energy of mankind, which is a result of our actions. Can I control that cloud? I can't. Soon we can see how, but it's already something that was, you know, the moment you do some action, it's already went to the universe. So that's the second kind of negative energy. And the third kind of negative energy is what manifests in this world from this cloud as rain that come in the form of negative things in life that come in the form of negative people, destruction, terrorism, all the things that we see in a negative reality, which is already manifestation of the cloud. Are, are you, is that clear? Because the actions we do in this world affect another reality which we don't see. We call the metaphysical reality, the source. And that's that cloud. Now, on the other hand, we have the power to diffuse that cloud to diffuse that cloud of darkness in the world that caused the manifestation of negative things in the world. That's the power and that's the mission of the Kabbalah Center, by the way. All what we do is to help mankind, number one, to eliminate the, the first kind of negativity, which is transform reactiveness to proactiveness, to change our character, change our way we are, that eliminate the first one. But the second thing, is to eliminate the dark cloud that there is on the metaphysical level, in the source, in the way that, in the reality we don't see. How? Through the spread of this wisdom, through the power of the Zohar. Because we know the Zohar has the power through the reading, through the spreading, through the distribution, through the Zohar project, to infuse the metaphysical level, not the physical level, the metaphysical level with more and more light, which is the anti-clouds of the negative clouds. And the more we diffuse the world with that energy, what will happen to those clouds? Very simple. When you light the light in a dark room, what happens to darkness? Disappear. So we have the power. We have the power, especially this month, because in this month it was the flood, but in this month the Creator promised mankind He will never bring destruction again. It's a promise. In other words, there are not going to be destruction in the world, but we might need to go through things in order to make a difference in this world, but we don't need to go through negative things. We don't need to go through those negative clouds. We can change those clouds to the action that we do and that's the power of the nun of our neshama, our soul. We, as Michael Berg says, we matter. 
Every action we do, every thought that we have matters. Matters in our life, matters in the world. Just like when a little candle, when you light it in a dark stadium, light the stadium. That little candle matters. Each one of us matters. That's why we come together in this new moon and by our collective intention, thoughts, we matter and we add more of the positive clouds in the universe to diffuse the negative clouds. Are we up for that? Yeah. And the power of this, you know, just to show the beauty of this month, if we can go to the next slide. Oh, we have it here. Just, yeah, just go to the next slide. Oh, no. The one before, the one before. Yes. So if you see, every month has a tetra, we call it tetragrammaton. Okay, this is a little bit deeper. The tetragrammaton, or the name of God, is the Yud Ke Vav Ke. That's how the light of the Creator is being channeled to this world. What's the power of this month? What's the combination of this month? It's the tetragrammaton you see below, and we see it from right to left. Vav, Hey, Hey, and Yud. Now, if you notice, the two letters Hey are in the middle, surrounded by the Vav on the right and the Yud on the left. Everybody can see that? Now, what are the two Hey's? So if you see, the two Hey's are similar, right? They are the same. One hay is connected to what we call malchut. Malchut means our world, the physical world, the ups and down, good and bad, reactive, proactive. Something good happened, I'm happy. Something bad happened, I'm down. Good news, bad news, emotional up, emotional down, body reactiveness. Are we all with that? That's, the, that's the, what we call the lower hay or the malchut. But there's another hay, which is called the world of Bina, the elevated Malchut. That's why they are the same letter. And what is Bina? Bina is unconditional love. Avat chesed. Bina is mercy. It's the original of mercy, because we know in the tree of life, after Bina come chesed, which is the origin of mercy, origin of kindness, Orangy of sensitivity, orangy of humility, or origin of empathy. Now, what does it mean? What is our job? And look, in this month, what is our job? That's why the two Hays are connected one to each other, because we are here through our action to elevate the lower Hay, the Malchut, the reactiveness, into the upper Hay, which is Bina which means in every action that I do, how much do I inject kindness? How much do I inject care? How much do I inject sensitivity? How much do I inject empathy into what I do? And actually, in the, the Zohar says, it says like this, and it's in portion Truma. Truma means to elevate. He says, Al aliyata malchut lebina, by elevating the malchut, the lower head, to Bina, which is the upper hay. Our work is to elevate. Remember, what's the opposite of the bitterness, which is Ma? Ram, elevate, which means as we are about now, you know, maybe it's the time now to call people. People have all kinds of movies in their head. I don't know what to do, what's going to happen. Call them, listen. Elevate the hay of Malchut to Bina by injecting listening, kindness, empathy. It's not the time now to preach, to tell people who is right, who is wrong. It's the time now to inject what? Mercy. That's the higher hay. And it's in the month of Scorpio. Right? The month of Scorpio, Scorpio can be very intense, but it's not the time now. The, now the time is to transform revenge into mercy. Yes. I need to be right. I need to defend. I need to do strong actions, but from a place of mercy, not from a place of revenge. 
he and he. And the beauty is the two he's represent also the female aspect, the sensitive part of us. And they are surrounded by what? Vav and Yud, which is the male energy, which is protection. So in this month, we got protection. Also in this month, we have Noach Ark. And we know Noach Ark is not about physical Ark. The Zohar says, who is the Ark? Who is the protection in our time? The Zohar. So right now, what the world needs is elevating our reactive nature into more compassion, sensitivity, harnessing, coming from a place of love. Doesn't mean you need to be weak. Yeah, be strong but come from a place of love. And at the same time, we all need to connect to the Ark of Noach, which is the Zohar. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to connect with the energy of the Zohar. And at the same time, we have the power, with the power of our soul, not the power of the falling, but which we can diffuse the negative clouds in the upper level, in the metaphysical level, so then we can diffuse the negative clouds by injecting more and more light, and then will result, you know, and Rob Berg, something, Rob Berg said something so crazy. He said, once you inject that love and positivity to the negative cloud, even the one that hates you or want to hurt you, suddenly they, do, they will not want to hurt you anymore, and they will change their behavior suddenly. Suddenly, the enemy will become a different being. How? That's the magic of the light. That's the magic of transforming negative to positive, darkness to light, diffusing the negative clouds that there is right now in the metaphysical level, that it is our job as students of Kabbalah to be part of how we can inject more this light. So this is the power we have this month. Very, very, very powerful. Definitely it's not the time now, because we know that what's the planet of this month? Mars. Mars is the planet of war. It's the planet of conflicts. It's the planet of dispute. It's not the time now to go to war. It's not the time to dispute. It's the time to build strength, which is also Mars. Having the strength of the Mars, with compassion, with elevating the hay to hay, and then we can diffuse and change the negative energy in this universe to something else. And then suddenly, we don't know how. Ever happened to you that you are a conflict in relationship and you took responsibility and suddenly you change something in and suddenly the other person is behaving different. And you didn't tell them anything. Suddenly they are different. Why? Because you did something inside which affected above, which affected them in the non-conscious level. But then they felt that vibration and suddenly they changed. And that's how, that's what we want to achieve. So I know I spoke too much, <laughs> but it's important that we should have this. And, um, you know, what we're going to have soon, we're going to have also the songs of what we call the fourth meal of Shabbat, which every Saturday night, you know, as again, it's very powerful what's happening this year, that Shabbat is a very elevated time but which connect to this very powerful energy. And now we're taking this energy into this week, but in this case, we're taking the energy into this month, which in this case, we're taking this energy into the year, as we explained, that we use certain songs, certain, also we're going to have uh, cookies and tea together, which is to have a meal to reveal this light, this energy in our lives and in the world. And also Michael will do a special meditation that we're all going to be involved. And really, our intention is to diffuse the negative forces in the metaphysical level. Because remember, nothing in this world starts on the physical. The problem is not the problem. You never fix the problem with the problem. You fix the problem by going to another level. Yes, you need to deal on the physical level, but you need first to take care of the internal, and then you take care of the physical. So. We're going to start with a song. <laughs>